I don't know how to do lighting in a car, but I'm coming to you from the car, obviously. The perfect setting to talk about reframing my goals, things changing, the mama writer motto, I swear, is that the moment you find your groove, something will change. Well, I wanna talk about that today, about kind of setting a new writing pace or just more being adaptable in my writing pace because I don't want it to seem like, oh, I made a change again and I'm locking it in. I just, it's more about learning to be flexible, which is not my strong suit, you guys. But I actually made some notes because first of all, just so you know where I'm coming from, I have a little guy, in case you didn't know, his name is Zion and he just switched from two naps to one. <laughs> if you don't have kids, it's gonna be like, what's the big deal? It's a big change. And fortunately, the nap is starting to condense and it's not as short, so it's like two to three hours. But I used to joke that I had a four hour work day because all of his naps would add up to three or four hours. Now I have like a two or three hour work day and that's it. That is not enough time. <laughs> to do everything that I wanna do. But even if I had more time, I'd probably fill it and still not have enough because that's just how I work. So I just feel like I need to, number one, reframe what I wanna get done so that instead of always feeling behind, I feel ahead and I don't feel guilty and I feel like I am accomplishing my goals in this season of life. On top of that, in my notes, I kind of touched on this in my last vlog, but we have gotten sick twice already this year in 2023. And that's frustrating because I am literally a month behind on my plan. But what I'm thinking is, so, okay, just to give you some reference of what life used to be like, what my um, typical publishing timeline used to look like, I basically set aside in the past about a month for each stage of writing. So the, the first draft, taking a month off, and I come back to it for a month uh, and do developmental edits. Then I would send it to my critique partner for a month. Then I would come back and edit with her feedback for a month. Then I would send it to betas for a month, sometimes two months. And I would do one month for editing with their feedback and then one month for sending it to my other critique partner or an editor, depending on which book we were looking at. And then I would give another month to edit with that feedback, finalizing, formatting, order a proof copy, and then one last month for proofreading and finalizing the book. And so like everything was broken up that way. If you're curious, I actually have this freebie on my newsletter. You can sign up to get it where it's just like a template of what I just talked about and kind of like a guiding you through how to set deadlines for each stage, right? But what I'm realizing now is that with Zion, I don't wanna say doubling it. I don't wanna go that extreme, but I think I need to go from one month for each stage to a month and a half for each stage, which is frustrating. But at the same time, it doesn't have to be. And that's where the reframing comes in, where it's just like, what if I was just like, this is my speed and that's okay. So if I was to take a month and a half for drafting, I started in not mid January, kind of late January because we were sick and then my computer wasn't working for a week. So if I was doing my typical old goals of one month, then I would want to be done right about now, like in the next couple days, and I'm just not. But if I was like, no, I'm reframing this, this is my new pace as a writer mom, I am doing a month and a half. Then I still have two more weeks to finish this book. I don't have to feel guilty anymore. I can just be like, this is my pace. And then the really nice thing is that even with my old pace, sometimes one stage would kind of roll over into the other and just kind of overlap a little bit. And so if I did need a little extra time to finish the first draft, that would roll into my month away from the book, no big deal. I have a little bit of buffer time. Comment below if any of that made sense because I feel like I might be rambling. For me, it's making sense, but actually implementing it, actually accepting it and being okay with the change is a little bit harder. But I've just found that if I get too stressed, then I don't do anything. I don't know if that's everybody or if that's more of an Enneagram 3 thing because I know for a fact that with an Enneagram 3, if the to-do list gets too big, we do nothing instead. So I've literally <laughs> caught myself ignoring my goals and reading a book. So I'm uh, way ahead on my Goodreads reading list this year. <laughs> I've read like 12 books already, but that's not necessarily a good thing for my goals. So when it comes to goals as a mom, I have two steps really that I just wanna rotate through. The first one is to get super focused, which means I need to stop getting sidetracked on shiny ideas, on <laughs> things that don't move me forward on the main goals. For example, this month I kind of took an unintentional break from YouTube. I was trying to do shorts just to keep up and have something for you guys. But honestly, I couldn't even do that. I was just so incredibly overwhelmed by trying to finish this book and I, I'm in a plot hole, plot hole, 
I don't know if I would call it a plot hole so much as a plot gap where I don't know what's supposed to happen and I don't want to just write filler. So I'm just sitting here being like, I don't know what to write next. Maybe I'll read a book instead. Not good, it's not a good habit. But the second thing that I've started to do ever since I had Zion is every month or so, I stop and reflect on what's not working and I make changes. So instead of being like, well, this is how I've always done it. I just need to keep doing it this way and feeling guilty if it doesn't work. I'm starting to reevaluate pretty frequently. Like, I mean, very frequently. Sometimes even every other week, I'm like, what worked last week is not working this week. What should I do different? <laughs> so for me, just so you know, again, for context, I really hate change. This is not my happy place necessarily, but it's something that is really good for my mental health because it allows me to not feel guilty and to get back on track and to still keep moving forward. And again, this might just be my personality, but for me, if I fall too far behind, I just start to be like, why don't I just give up? Why am I doing this? Why do I even bother? So that flexibility, while it's not natural for me, helps me to get back on track. So what I want to do today is talk to you guys about how I'm applying this to books, how I'm applying this to YouTube. All right, when it comes to books, first of all, I am still internalizing that I can only focus on one book at a time. So how am I applying this? Well, I really do want to finish drafting book three just so I know the ending. I have an ending in place and I feel like that'll actually help me when I go back to edit book two because I'll know where Jezebel's story ends and I really think that's valuable for book two. But once I finish drafting book three and just have that ending figured out, I'm not going to touch it again until book two is released. I'm going to make book two my focus and just do one book at a time. And I think this is really good because I've also noticed on social media, I want to talk about the book that I'm working on, which is not even out yet. There's not even a pre-order for it. And so it's not great for marketing purposes. So what I need to do is pull myself back and talk about book two and market book two and talk about book two, which is what's on pre-order and naturally market it just by talking about it because I'm working on it. I think pulling back and working on just one book at a time is really gonna be valuable actually. It feels not good because I feel like I should be ahead, but actually I think it's going to be beneficial. So reframing that, again, it's almost like all mindset when you're reframing you're just changing your mindset from this is a bad thing to this is a good thing. It's not, the thing itself doesn't change. You just see it differently. Does that make sense? I'm kind of talking to myself right now and being like, Bethany, take this to heart. Wow, I just accidentally deleted all my notes. So let's see if I can remember everything. This video might be shorter, which is not a bad thing. <laughs> So the other thing that I already kind of went into was that I think I need to start taking a month and a half per stage of the process and that's just going to help me relax. That said though, my release date for book two is June 20th. So I did build in a really good buffer. I think it was over a month of buffer time in case things took longer and I'm going to need it. So like I said, I'm drafting book three. I would really like to finish by the end of February. That said, that might not be likely because remember my month and a half would actually land me in first or second week of March. See, I'm struggling with it. Like I don't even want to say that. I want to be like, no, end of the month, but I'm going to change it to the first week of March. I want to be done. Okay. This is wild. I am at the library right now, so I'm obviously using my computer and my headsets here for audio. Um, I hope this will be okay. I'll keep it short, but I just wanted to say another amazing example of reframing that happened after I recorded this video back in February. Um, I ended up going on vacation with my husband for our anniversary the first week of March. And like I said in this video, that was like the two more weeks and I wanted to be done and I wasn't done. In fact, I probably still had two more weeks to go, but I was like, okay, how can I reframe this and change my goals while still accomplishing what I need to accomplish? So what I ended up doing, and I'm really excited about this actually, is I had an outline for what I wanted to write and I had been working with my critique partner already on the, what I would guess, I guess you would call the climax, the five point finale, if you know Save the Cat's outlining structure. And I had a really detailed outlining for that because it was a big plot hole. So I had already a good like five or six pages of outline just for that, plus a few more pages of outline for the rest of the story that I had yet to write. So what I did is I went and put all of that outline in my Word document I, I added to it. I kind of fleshed it out. I added bits of dialogue that came to me, anything that I knew I wanted to add, but it was more like bullet point outline, not final story. And then I sent it to my critique partner and I said, the first half of the story is there. Actually, the first two thirds is fully written. And then the rest of it is outlined for you to read. And I would love your feedback on it. 
that way and I'm sending it to you now. It was March 3rd when I sent it and I said, this is it. This is me wrapping up this project. I have a general sense of the full story and how it ends, which is what I needed. And I can get feedback from her while still being able to move on back to book two, which is vital because I don't want to fall behind on this deadline anymore. So I hope that's another great example of how I'm reframing my goals and kind of approaching them in a different way. Anyway, back to the video. <laughs> Then I'm going to come back to book two, work on my beta reader feedback in all of March. And I think my critique partner can't read book two until April anyway. So it actually works out. But oh, I just did it again. I only gave myself a month. So really it should be a month and a half of working on the beta reader feedback. I don't like this. I don't like it. But okay. So that would put me in mid-April. And then my critique partner is actually fast. So the good news is that some of this doesn't depend on me and she reads extremely fast. She has already set aside time to read. So she could be done by the end of April, which hopefully will help me get back on track with my goals. And I will take all of May to work on her feedback, finish the formatting, finalize edits, order a proof copy, proofread the book, and upload the final files in May and actually into mid-June, right? If I'm giving myself a month and a half instead of a month. And the good news is that's okay because mid-June is when it comes out. So I actually will just barely make it. So I do still need to push. I probably should try to do it faster than a month and a half, but when I go to set goals for the future, at least as long as Zion is like under four or five years old, I think I'm gonna start expanding my timeline from a month for each stage to a month and a half for each stage. And that in theory will help me make my goals and not be frustrated all the time. So then let's talk about YouTube because if you think about it, I have to apply this to YouTube as well. I would do a video where I would take a couple hours to plan it out, do my research if I needed to, think through what I wanted to say and organize it, a couple hours to film. <laughs> I take too long to film, but honestly, a couple hours. Then editing, I put a lot of time into editing, you guys. I probably put five to 10 hours into each video. That's a lot. And then there's the uploading process where I you know, create the thumbnail. I spend a lot of time on that as well, writing out the description, gathering all the links, at least one or two hours for that. So this whole process here can be anywhere from 15 to 20 hours hours per video, depending on the video, of course, because some are shorter by nature and some are longer. And that's just not doable in this season of life either. So what I need to do is find a way to cut that in half. That's not so much reframing goals as reframing my expectations. I still want it to be quality, but how can I cut the time in half? So I have a couple cool ideas. The first one is going to be a big reveal that I might have already announced by the time this video comes out, or you might be about to see it, but I am attempting a sort of podcast style video. It's gonna be once or twice a month depending on a lot of variables, but I wanna to talk to other authors and I wanna do it more podcast style where I don't edit it a lot and it is just this really awesome chunk of content that's just more natural conversation with another author and I'm actually I'm still planning quite a bit to be honest because I have I just want to gather up the best questions for them and be as prepared as possible but it's so much fun and I don't have to edit so this is how it's cutting down time I'm still putting in at least a couple hours prep there's the hour of chatting with the other author, but then it's only about another hour or so to edit because I'm not doing a ton of fancy editing. I'm just kind of reviewing it really quick and then putting it up on YouTube and making a thumbnail, which is another hour or so. So that's really only like four or five hours. So it's literally cutting my work time in half. That's the first one. The second thing I want to try is actually what's called repurposing content and making a, I watched a video on this where they described it. It was so cool. It was called binge watching or something like that, where you could combine a bunch of videos you've already made that you know people will enjoy on a similar topic. You combine them together. You have to do a little bit of editing. Sometimes you have to maybe record a short intro or um, a short like one or two minute clip to kind of connect the videos and that's it. And the editing again is going to be like, it's mostly edited already. I did all the work on those videos to make them really good quality before. It's just maybe another hour or so of splicing them together, boom another awesome video that you actually might not have watched before because maybe it's from a few years back and you didn't even know it existed. Maybe I'll do the Mama Writer series and put my entire process of writing that book into one massive video so you can be like, let's watch the whole process in an hour. It's like binging a TV show and it's all together already, repurposing the content. And that's number two. Number three 
is the probably the most obvious that you could see coming, which is just record shorter videos. Don't make them so intense and don't worry about doing all this crazy editing graphics. I still want them to be high quality, but they don't necessarily have to have flashy graphics every two seconds because you guys are amazing. You will still listen to me and hang out with me even if I'm not like, you know, flashing things at you every two seconds, hopefully. That was the first three. What was the last one? This is not good. I deleted my notes and now I can't remember. I can't remember if it was shorts to kind of fill in the gaps because I do like doing shorts, but I don't, they're not gonna be my main content. But I was looking at my list of all my video ideas and I was like, this could totally be said in just 60 seconds and it doesn't need to be a longer video and it can still bring a lot of value. So I think, yeah, that's, gonna be my goal and then I'm gonna add a fifth one on there to the list which is if I don't have time it's okay to skip a video this is just a season and I think it's gonna ebb and flow and I think you guys are amazing and understanding and so many of you have said if you need to just skip a video a week that's okay now I don't want to do that so that's why I'm trying to get ahead and do all these other strategies to help me basically cut my time in half but still show up and bring you valuable content so I'm really excited about it and we'll see how it goes but like I said at the very beginning of this video, everything about Mama Writer Life is constantly changing and being okay with that, figuring it out as we go. <laughs> I just felt like I see so many people being like, well, I didn't make my goals, I feel bad. And instead I feel like we need to reframe things and say, I made half my goals, I feel awesome. I'm gonna make the next half this month. You know what I mean? It's, it's all mindset. I hope this was encouraging to somebody and I will talk to you guys again very soon, bye. No.